Hey everybody, um, welcome to your mats today. Like it's been uh, kind of a long time since I've done this, so I'm excited to be back. Um, life got kind of busy in there, the kids didn't be in school. Um, and having put out a couple of videos, I know you guys had some stuff to choose from, but I've been craving teaching. I'm still craving teaching, hoping to get back into the real studio at the YMCA soon. So I do welcome to your, you to your mats. I know that there is a lot of turmoil in the world right now, so I think that this is an excellent opportunity to maybe clear your mind and take a break from everything that we're seeing and reading about. Not that that means that um, that sense of mindfulness does not need to also creep into making some good change um, within ourselves and within the world. So I think that yoga can be um, a catalyst to all of that. So I encourage you while you're here to tune into the body, aim for the mind to stay clear. You will be better able to take care of things, whatever those things might be, whether that be some activism or whether that be taking care of your family or yourself, all of it will be um, better if you care for yourself. So throughout the practice, tune in, find gratitude, and um, find a little bit of just appreciation that you have the ability to be here today. We are gonna start in a standing position today. This is going to be a regular, I always put air quotes around that, not power, not gentle, but yoga flow, vinyasa style as I do. Go ahead and make your way to a standing position if you aren't already. We're gonna take our way to the front of the mat and begin in mountain posture. So you might rock back and forth a couple of times, aiming to find that connection with the earth, feel a little more grounded. As the weight comes toward the heels, if it feels okay to your balance, lift up all 10 toes, fan them out, draw forward and begin to grip the mat. Noticing that deep connection with the earth, you're feeling balanced, let the kneecaps pull up so that the legs get long and strong. A little bit of softness comes back into the knees. As the energy pulls up, you're gonna feel just a very slight drop in the tailbone, not an active tuck, but you do wanna feel the tailbone just very gently drop, noticing the abdominals begin to engage with that. Let the arms be loose to begin, let the gaze begin to soften toward the floor if it feels okay to your balance. You might close the eyes. For many people, that helps them find their own internal focus a little easier. Take your attention to the breath. Throughout the practice, staying connected to the breath will help you keep the mind clear. This is a huge part of yoga. Breath comes to the nose if you can. We'll begin by exhaling fully through the nose. Empty the lungs completely. Pause at the bottom of the breath, then inhale. Fill the lungs all the way back up. Pause at the top of the breath as well, being aware of the breath. In through the nose, out through the nose. Notice the movement coming with the breath. Start to tune into all five senses. We'll take two more breaths here. Next three breaths, we're gonna start with some shoulder rolls. As you inhale, take the shoulders toward the ears. As you exhale, drop them back down. Two more just like that, exaggerating the shoulders toward the ears. And exhale, release back down. Last one. And let the shoulders drop down, finding a more active mountain posture. The arms now begin to flow with energy from the shoulders all the way to the fingertips. You've got space through the neck. Then we'll take one more breath here. Exhale, the chin rises just slightly, align it to be parallel to the floor. We'll let the left ear begin to drop toward the left shoulder. Notice the stretch running up the right side of the neck. Give it a breath. Weight of the head guides this and keep the shoulders drawing down. If you want to add some pressure, you can take the left hand up and around toward the right ear, guide the head a little bit closer. Maybe take the right hand back and behind you making it more active, adding that little bit of work, warm, warming through the tricep. Release the grasp of the head, let the gaze begin to drift over the left shoulder, inching the fingertips a little further back with that right hand, keeping the shoulders square to the short side of the mat. One more breath here, reach. And exhale, relax. Everything melts back to center, drop your shoulders. Once again, active mountain, Tadasana and switch sides. Let the left ear, excuse me, right ear drop toward the right shoulder. Full deep breath here. Once again, let the weight of the head guide the stretch up the left side of the mat. You can add some pressure if it feels okay. The right hand comes up toward the left ear, very gently guides the head closer. And switching sides with that series. Now the left hand begins to pull back and behind you. The tailbone's still dropping, the belly button's pulling in, let the core be engaged. 
Release the head, soft gaze over the right shoulder. Releasing tension and stress through the face. Take a moment to swallow if it helps. And then we'll move on and exhale. Everything melts back to center. Take the shoulders down. Active mountain, roll through the neck on your own. Nice and slow, weight of the head guides it. So I always imagine my head like a big bowling ball, just kind of going right around in this circle. You can let the head drop back. Open and close the mouth a couple of times. Release through the throat and then finish your rotation. Align the gaze to come forward from here. Full deep breath. We're going to add some movement here to the breath. Slowly inhale the arms up. Allow the current hands to draw together. Drop the shoulders at a gentle arch, reaching back. And we'll release per hands to heart center. Let the gaze follow. One more, just like that. Arms sweep wide. Prayer hands connect above us. Reach back, gentle arch. And release prayer hands to heart center. Gaze can follow. We'll add a fold this time. Arms sweep wide. Prayer hands draw together. Reach. And as we exhale, start to swan dive down. Lead with your heart. And release into our first forward fold. So you're feeling the hamstrings wake up. You are welcome to reach for a block here. You're also welcome to bend your knees here. Kind of start to ease that stretch into the backs of the legs by beginning to find length slowly. Noticing the weight of the torso, you're welcome to kind of very gently bounce with the torso, pulsing gently, waking up the hamstrings. One more breath here. Next inhale, look out and lengthen. The fingertips might graze the floor here. You might draw the hands up to the shins. We wanna allow the spine to be nice and long, nice flat back like an ironing board. Hold. And then as you find your breath, we'll exhale back into our forward fold. One more breath here. At the bottom of the breath, begin to bend into the knees as much as you need to for the hands to be next to the feet. Your fingers are spread nice and wide. We'll transition back to plank. Push-up position. So one foot at a time, take a step back and find plank. If that feels like a little bit too much work, especially this early in the practice, you can drop to the knees and find kneeling plank. That's an option throughout your practice. Nice straight line either way, from the shoulders to the knees, excuse me, or the heels. As you spread your fingers wide, you're pulling the weight out of the wrists. We'll pause for another breath. At the bottom of the breath, drop to your knees if you're not already there. We're going to settle into all fours. You're going to want the knees to adjust right under the hips. Wrist under elbow, under shoulder through the arms, continuing to let the fingers be spread wide. This is horse stance, going through a couple of cat cows, warm up the spine. Inhale with a neutral spine. And exhale into cat, round the spine, tuck the tailbone, pull the chin toward the chest. <coughs> As you inhale, drop the belly cow, tailbone rises, gaze rises. And as you exhale, cat. Flow through cat cow a couple of more times with your own breath, releasing through the spine a little bit more with each one. One more of these. You can fin finish on cat or cow, your choice. And then allow your spine to come back to neutral, pausing for a breath here. We're gonna add a little bit of work here, go through some modified chaturanga push-ups, take the knees back a step. Drop the hips to come back to that modified plank. Continuing to let the fingers be spread wide. As you exhale, begin to lower the heart slowly. Elbows scrape and then hug the rib cage. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull your hips back. Let your child's pose be active. So the arms pull off the mat, the gaze is forward. Flow through one more. Inhale forward, modified plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, slowly pull back, active child. We're going to add to it this time. Inhale, forward, modified plank. Exhale, lower, slowly, and then go ahead and drop to your belly. Rising up into cobra. So in full cobra, you should be able to lift your hands. It is the strength of the back lifting the heart, pulling the elbows back and behind you. Feel your hip bones draw down. One more breath here. And exhale, right into child's pose this time. Full, relaxed child's pose. You might widen your knees a little bit, give yourself space. Hips are pulling back toward the heels. Foreheads drop to the mat at third eye center. 
While in child's pose, take a moment to set an intention for your practice. Something you might be personally working towards. Something that's going to inspire you while you're here. So words like peace, open-mindedness, non-judgment. It's your practice you get to choose. When you're ready, there is no rush. We'll go ahead and find our first downward facing dog. Letting the weight come back forward. Fingers are spread wide. Your hands are about shoulder distance apart. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, and then begin to settle the heels back toward the mat. As you continue to find length in the hamstrings, you want to notice the heels pulling toward the back of the mat, not forcing anything though. It might help to pedal the heels a couple of times. Warming up the legs. Keeping the shoulders pulling down, you want that space through the neck, so your head is just dangling, gaze somewhere between the toes and the knees. One more breath here. As you feel the chest sink, feel the triceps pull toward one another. It helps you get in better alignment through the shoulders. Bottom of the breath, gaze comes up between the hands, stepping, walking. If you want to practice your hop, feel free to hop forward, back to forward fold. Releasing and relaxing into your forward fold. Soft knees, heavy torso. Forward fold already might be beginning to feel better. It will throughout the practice. It's a great place to find gratitude. To come up and out of our forward fold, we'll find length in the spine first and then keep it slow. Reverse one dive up, arms sweep wide. Let prayer hands draw together above us. Arch back gently. Release prayer hands through heart center, back to the side. Tadasana Mountain. Take a breath here, check in with your intention. Before we go through a couple of sun salutation A's, we are going to um, warm up a little bit with a couple of squats. Going through something a little bit different today, you might want to block ahead of you or something else you can have for support. Um, not going through our traditional squ uh, squats if you come to my classes regularly, it is just a little bit different. So tune into the body, move as far as you can, we're willing to today. Go ahead and widen your stance, taking the feet wider than hip distance apart. We're going to create an angle out of the feet. If you're using the short side of the mat, the balls of the feet are going to come off the mat, allowing the heels to stay on the mat. So I've got, I don't know, maybe about two feet between my heels. Allowing the knees to start to drop toward the second toe as we go into this. Noticing the length we're going to keep in the spine here. Arms sweep wide, prayer hands draw together, arch back gently. As you exhale, fold forwards. So you might reach for a block here in order to keep that length in the spine. Fingertips might graze the floor. Slowly drop the hips, lower into a squat. Lengthen the legs and start to reverse one dive up. Arms sweep wide, prayer hands draw together, reach back gently. This time as you drop into your squat, prayer hands come to heart center as you lower. You get to choose how low. As you inhale, draw back up, arch back. As you exhale, fold forward. Keep length in the spine, drop the hips. Lengthen the legs, keep it slow, reverse one dive back up, prayer hands draw together, arch back. Exhale, lower, prayer hands coming to heart center. Inhale, draw up, arch back. Exhale, fold, keep length in the spine. Drop the hips, lengthen the legs, keep it slow, reverse one dive up. Last one of these, prayer hands draw together, arch back. Exhale, lower into your squat. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold, keep length, drop the hips, lengthen the legs and hold here. At this point, relax. So there's going to be a very gentle, natural rounding of the spine. Full deep breath here. Adding a gentle twist. Look out and lengthen. You can keep your block at center or your hand at center. You might begin to move the hand a little further to the right and allow the right hand to draw up toward the sky, twisting. Full deep breath here. Exhale, untwist. And once again, relax, feeling the weight of the torso. Full deep breath here. Inhale, look out and lengthen. This time the right hand comes to center, or maybe even move it a little further over to the left. And we're going to let the left hand open up toward the sky, moving into our twist. Full deep breath here. As you inhale, find more length in the spine. Exhale, maybe twist deeper. And then slowly untwist back around. Relaxing. From here, begin to drop the hips into that squat, and we're going to circle sweep right up into goddess. So just gently lift the chest, circle sweep the arms right around into those goalpost arms for goddess. 
Hips drop, elbows pull back, find your breath. A lot of work here. And we'll push into the feet rise, let prayer hands draw together above us, arch back, and then release prayer hands to heart center. Go ahead and take your feet back into that mountain posture, arms can drop back to the side, active mountain, back at the front of your mat if you're not there already, take a breath here, preparing for two sun salutation A's, keeping the body warm. Inhale the arms up, prayer hands draw together, reach back, gentle arch, exhale fold, loop with the heart, swan dive down, and sink into your forward fold. Inhale, look out and lengthen, follow your breath. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, hands come next to the feet, step walk or maybe hop back, plank or kneeling plank. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana, aiming to keep it slow. You can also go through kneeling chaturanga, hover, inhale, cobra or up dog this time. Tops of the feet and the hands, draw into the mat. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, down dog or find child's pose for a couple of breaths. That is always an option. Notice your breath, we'll take two more here. Keep all 10 fingers deep into the earth, just like starfish, stuck to the mat, shoulders are sinking, gaze is soft, aiming to be able to breathe freely, swallow easily, every now and then smile. At the bottom of the breath, gaze shifts forward between the hands, step walk, maybe hop, forward fold. Feeling better and better, full deep breath here. To rise, find length. Arms sweep wide, reverse swan dive up, prayer hands draw together, fill your lungs up, reach back, and exhale, fold. Right back down, lead with the heart. Forward fold. Inhale, look out and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, hands come next to the feet, step walk or hop, plank. Nice straight line or kneeling plank. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana, cover. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale back, child's pose or down dog. Three full deep breaths. Let the breath draw you back to your place of calm. The breath is calming and it is nourishing. And pause for one more here. We will be moving from downward facing dog. So from child's pose, go ahead and make your way back to down dog, adding on from here. At the bottom of your next breath, let the left foot draw back and behind you, three-legged dog. Hold here for a moment, feel the hip drop, let the foot maybe reach just a little bit higher. And then let the gaze shift up between the hands. We're going to step the left foot through. We're aiming to let it be between the hands. If it only wants to make it halfway, take your left hand and kind of help it along. Letting the ankle be right underneath the knee. Pivot the right heel away from you. Create a nice firm foundation with both feet. We're setting up for a warrior series. So we're gonna start in warrior one. So we're gonna climb up the thigh, lift the heart. If it feels okay just to draw right up into the toes, feel free. Prayer hands might adjust to heart center. Then maybe it feels okay to reach for the full expression of the pose. The further up you go, the more it's gonna challenge your balance. Feel everything draw right in toward the midline. Pull everything in toward the core for better balance. Notice the strength in the front leg length and strength in the back. One more breath. Exhale, split your arms, warrior two. Dropping the shoulders and noticing the arms flow with energy all the way through the fingertips. That front knee is just easing gently toward the pinky toe. Shoulders staying centered right over the hips. Some people have a tendency to start to draw forward. It's gonna put a lot more work into that front leg and take the work out of the core. Exhale, reverse warrior. Right hand drops back, left hand reaches up. We're a little further back. Noticing the arch drawn to the back with the support it. Pull the belly button in. As we exhale, we'll flow through warrior two into extended side angle. So you're welcome to bend into the front arm and let it rest on the thigh right above the knee. Or maybe the left hand wants to come all the way to the floor. Right hand can shoot up toward the sky. If it doesn't bother your shoulder, go ahead and create that angle right over the ear. Nice straight line from the fingertips down to your extended heel. Heart is open, notice your breath. If anybody is working toward their bind or wants to add a chest expansion, the right hand can begin to wrap the waist back and behind you, noticing the heart draw a little further open. You can stay there. If you want to go into that full bind, move slowly. Left hand might reach underneath the thigh and you create that full lock, interlacing the fingers back and behind you. One more breath here. The bottom of the breath, unbind if you happen to be down. 
Let your gaze shift over the front foot. One hand comes to either side. Pivoting on the back foot or stepping back to either downward facing dog, or you're welcome to find child's pose, your choice. Pausing for three or four breaths before we go through that series on the other side, giving the body the chance to relax and rest for a couple of breaths. If you want to add more work, you're welcome to move through a half series. You would draw forward into plank. Exhale through chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale back, downward facing dog. One more breath here. Bottom of the breath, moving from down dog. So you're in child's pose, begin to make your way back to down dog. And we'll want a three-legged dog using the right foot to draw back and behind us. Drop your hip, lift the foot, fingers spread wide, breathe. And gaze shifts up between the hands, stepping the right foot through. Maybe using the right hand to help it a little further forward. Pivot the left heel away from you. Full deep foundation with all four corners of both feet in the earth. Even the back edge of that back foot. Push into the feet and begin to either climb up the thigh or maybe just draw right up into your warrior one. Prayer hands might come to heart center. Maybe from here you reach past the gaze. Full expression of the pose. Drop your shoulders. Give yourself space. Notice the strength in the front leg and the length in the back leg. I'm looking at my kitty out the window. I'm not sure if that's in the shot or not, but he's awfully cute. <laughs> Pause for another breath here. As we exhale, arms split, warrior two. Feel that stretch in the inner thigh, the knees gently pulling out, and as the shoulders pull to the short side of the mat, notice how the heart feels more open, a little bit more freeing in our warrior two. One more breath. And exhale, reverse warrior. Left hand drops back, right hand reaches up and back. Drop your shoulder, give yourself space. One more breath here. From reverse warrior, warrior two. From warrior two, extended side angle. Bend the front arm, continue to draw forward. The arm rests on the thigh, or maybe moves to the floor or block. If you're using the block, go ahead and place on the outside of that front foot. Noticing that angle, it's extended side angle. So you've got that straight line all the way down the left side of the body. One more breath here. If you're choosing to maybe add a bind or you just want to add that chest expansion, the left hand might wrap back and behind the waist. Maybe it feels okay, move slowly for the right hand to draw underneath and move into that full lock. If you're in bound extended side angle, give it another breath here. It's going to feel like the right side of the rib cage is just resting on your right thigh. Unbound if you're bound, extended side angle. Gaze shifts over the front foot. One hand comes to either side. Pivot on the back foot and once again, adjusting the down dog or child's pose, your choice. Settling into the pose, notice your breath. Let it draw you back to the present moment. If you wanna move through another half series, feel free. If that is you, you would draw forward into plank. Exhale through chaturanga. Inhale, cobra up dog, and then exhale back to your downward facing dog. Two more breaths here. Move on an exhale. From down dog, the gaze is gonna shift up between the hands. Step walk or maybe hop. Forward fold. Much deeper forward fold. Notice the softness of the knees. Notice how the hamstrings have gotten longer. If you wanna even Deepen the stretch even more. You can wrap the calves. Use the calves as leverage to gently pull the chest closer to the thighs. You might grasp opposite elbows. Notice how that makes the torso feel heavier. Just drapes you deeper into the pose. If you're comfortable taking a toe grasp, peace fingers would wrap the big toes and the thumbs. Inhale, look out and lengthen. And then exhale, draw down. Soft knees, heavy torso, last breath. If you have a bind or grasp, release. You might choose to start to roll up slowly or you might pull reverse one dive up, arm sweep wide. And we'll meet in Tadasana Mountain. Full deep breath here. Let's take one more. Check in with your intention. 
from here, we're gonna move through a pyramid series where we end up in one of our balancing poses, balancing half moon. So many people like a block for that. I did not have my block nearby. I'm gonna go grab it, so I'm gonna be off for a second. I'll be right back with the block. You grab me one. I would be happy to. And as I've said numerous times while doing these recordings, if you happen to not have a block, you can try to find something else that's substantial, maybe a shoebox or something else you can use for support. Um, there's lots of household items that you can probably find. A bowl upside down works pretty well. There's anything that's going to give you that height and stability. Moving back to the front of the mat, we're going to start in a revolved pyramid, which is a fairly deep twist. Also a great place for a block. Helps the floor be a little bit closer, your arm be a little bit longer, however you want to look at that. Start with the left foot forward. Take a pretty small step back with the right foot. So I'm going to say maybe 12 to 18 inches between your feet. That back foot is back at that 45 degree angle. We're going to square off with the shoulders and hips to the short side of the mat as much as we can here. Align the block to be right at center. Taking the left hand to the left hip. Inhale the right arm up next to the right ear. Drop your shoulder. Inhale, reach back. Notice the arch in the back. And exhale, keep playing. It's like the fingertips are drawing a line right down, right down the wall in front of you reaching for the block right ahead of you. Begin to twist to the left, drawing the heart open toward the left. The left hand can stay on the hip. Maybe it drifts right up to the sky, drawing the heart even further open. Aiming to keep your hips as level as possible. One more breath here as you inhale, lengthen the spine even more. And as you exhale, you might twist a little deeper. And then we'll slowly start to come out of it. Untwist, come back around, and find softness in the spine now. So you're going to feel that once again, gentle rounding, as if the weight of the torso is just pouring over your extended left leg. Gently pulling your hips back. It's going to give your right hip a little bonus stretch. Increase the stretch of that front hamstring. One more breath here. Let your head dangle, the gaze is back and behind you. Preparing for our balancing half moon, we want to begin with lengthen the spine, so look out and lengthen. If you are a block user, you're going to adjust your block a little ahead of and to the left of the left foot. You can also use a wall for this. A wall is great for your balancing half moon. When you're ready, take the weight to the left foot, let the right foot pull back and behind you, let it be pointed, fluented, or flexed. Then hinge your hip open, feeling the left hip pull underneath the right. Right hand might start to come right up to the right hip. Maybe it reaches right for the sky. In the full expression of balancing half moon, your shoulders are stacked, your hips are stacked, heart is open. My personal favorite pose is balancing half moon. It feels very open, balanced, grounded. We'll take one more breath here. Rotating back toward the floor if you're not already. Allow the right foot to swing in next to the left and we'll take a breath and forward fold. Full deep breath here, in through the nose, and out through the nose. From here, you might start to roll up, you might pull reverse swan dive up, we're making our way back to mountain where we will meet. And as you make your way there, take a breath, full breath here. You're gonna notice how your legs feel a little uneven, especially after that series, because we had balance, we had deep hamstring stretches, so we're gonna even out the body, go through it on the other side. So this time, right foot stays forward, small step back with the left foot. Square off your shoulders and your hips to the short side of the mat. Right hand comes to the right hip, setting up for that revolved pyramid, deep twist. Inhale the left arm up next to the left ear, drop your shoulder to give yourself space. As you inhale, reach back. As you exhale, fold forward. Keeping length, you're pulling length into the spine, actually. As your hand makes it to the block, or maybe the floor, twist to the right. Maybe the right hand stays on the hip. Maybe it feels okay to your shoulder to let it drift up. If you feel any pain in the shoulder with that reach, go ahead and let the hand come back in. You can also wrap your waist if you want it to be a deeper twist. One more breath here. Inhale, find length. Exhale, maybe twist a little deeper. And then we'll start to come out of it very slowly. Rotate back toward the floor and relax. Almost imagine yourself like a rag doll just pouring over your extended right leg. Pull your hips gently back, letting the weight drop more toward the heels. And notice the dangling of the head, your soft gaze. Take a moment maybe to swallow. Last breath here. 
Setting up for balancing half moon. Once again, look out and lengthen. We don't lengthen this fine. Adjusting your block a little ahead of to the right of the right foot if you're using one. When you're ready, step to the right foot, left foot pulls back. Hinge the hips open. Maybe it feels okay for the left hand to come to the left hip, maybe not for me today. Or reach all the way for the sky. Once again, in the full expression of balancing half moon, your body is flat. It reminds me of Triopanasana triangle, as if your body is being pushed between two sheets of glass. Let's take one more breath here. Bottom of the breath, rotate back toward the floor. Your left foot swings in next to your right this time, and we're gonna relax into forward fold. Soft knees, heavy torso, we've gone through it equally on both sides. Please feel free to add a bind or grasp if that feels good to you. Deepening your stretch through the hamstrings in your forward fold. No strain on the neck, gaze is still back and behind you. Last breath here. And we'll release any binder grasp you might have and start to come up, rolling up or reverse swan diving up, your choice. Arching back gently might feel good. And we're gonna make our way back to mountain to me, Tadasana Mountain. Once again, check in with your intention. Full deep breath. Moving through tree before we work our way down. It's gonna be our second standing balance pose before we go down for some seated and reclined postures. So as you make your way to a place where you're ready to do tree, a lot of people don't like the cushions of the mats. So you're welcome to step off the mat, maybe on a hardwood floor or not carpet. You're also welcome to use the wall for support. So if you have a piece of furniture, anything that happens to be around you. So feel free to adjust before you go into this. And we're gonna start on our left foot for balance first. So as you feel length and strength run up the left leg, notice the muscles around the hip beginning to engage. That's really gonna help with balance and engaging the core is also gonna help with balance. Then begin to make your way to tree. The weight comes out of the left foot, maybe it just stays on the floor, heel can rest right above the ankle. You might start to draw the foot up slowly, a little more maybe. You might even take the right hand and pull the foot all the way up into the inner thigh. Prayer hands can stay at heart center, pushing prayer hands together sometimes helps you find stability. Maybe your tree wants to grow. Maybe your branches want to spread wide. Align your gaze to draw toward the floor. A couple of feet in front of you is good for most. And finding acceptance, I'm feeling wobbly today, is good for all. So just take another couple of breaths here. Feeling grounded through your left foot. Core is engaged. Move on an exhale. Prayer hands can come back to heart center if they aren't there already and we'll step out of the pose. Rolling your shoulders a few times might feel good after balancing. Shaking the legs out a little bit, shifting your weight around might feel good. Going through the same thing on the other side, we'll move to the right foot for balance. Take a full deep breath. Then begin to make your way to tree on this side. Prayer hands can stay at heart center. You can start to move the left foot further up. We wanna avoid pushing right into the opposite knee, so that's something to be cognizant of. Dropping the tailbone, engaging the core. Wherever this um, left foot is perched on the foot, we want to notice the knee drawing back, increasing the stretch through the inner thigh. One more breath. Tree might begin to grow from here. Branches might spread wide. You're welcome to adjust your arms, especially if you're in your own home, you don't have to worry about people around you. Arms can be in a straight T, hands might stay on the hips. You can play around with it, see what works best for you today. From here, we'll start to come out of it. Let prayer hands come back to heart center if they aren't there already. And step out of the pose. Once again, you can bend into the knees, shake your legs out a little bit, roll your shoulders a few times. And then take a moment in Tadasana Mountain. Full deep breath. If you are not already, make your way back toward the front of the mat. Preparing on working our way down from here. Move with your breath. Inhale the arms up. Prayer hands draw together, reach back, gentle arch. Exhale, fold, loop at the heart. Swan dive down, sink to your forward fold. Full breath here. 
Inhale, look out and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, hands come next to the feet. Step walk, maybe hop back. Plank or kneeling plank. Let's take a full breath here. And at the bottom of the breath, drop to the knees and start to slowly drop the hips back, moving into child's pose for a couple of breaths. Giving the body the opportunity to rest. The forehead is dropped to the mat, third eye center. Arms can either be stretched ahead of you, that's extended child. If you want to move to collected child, the hands would start to come back and behind you, either resting by the feet, palm side up, or grasping for the heels. Let's take one more breath here. Slowly start to roll up. We're going to go through a backward bending pose called camel from here. I think that's one I've missed on my previous video, so I'm trying to cover some different poses. Come on up to the knees to move into camel. You're wanting your knees to be right under your hips, and as you move into this backward bending posture, you're gonna have the opportunity to reach back for the feet back and behind you. So some people can reach back if they've got real, a lot of flexibility through their spine with their shoelace side of the foot toward the floor and find their heels. Otherwise, you might, which is what I'm gonna do, Tuck the toes back and behind you, giving yourself a little more stability and helping the heels be a little bit closer to reach. We're gonna take the fist to the low back, feel the elbows drop back, actively feeling that chest begin to open and feeling that work through the triceps. Let your hips start to draw forward before you even let your shoulders draw back. Hips draw forward, shoulders begin to ease back into that gentle back bend. And this might be where you are. Hips drawing forward, shoulders dropping back. If it feels okay, you can reach back with one hand and maybe grasp for a heel. Take a breath and switch sides. Or for some people, it feels okay to reach back with both hands. Continuing to feel the hips draw forward even as the shoulders drop back. You can keep your gaze fixed on the ceiling. Some people let the head drop all the way back. Be kind of cautious with that. For a lot of people, it hurts their neck. Come out of it that way. One more breath. From whatever position you are in, maybe the fists come back to the low back. Go ahead and find length in the spine. We're going to return to child's pose to give the spine a chance to counter stretch. Go ahead and keep your knees closer together with this. Letting the spine wrap bent knees, encouraging that round shape through the spine after that backward bending position of camel. We're going to move into rabbit, which is an even more rounding of the spine posture. I always like to give this warning when we go into rabbit. If you happen to feel some sort of catch kind of in your rib cage area, come on out of it and allow yourself to let the spine be long in a wide knee child's pose if that happens to be you. To move into rabbit, it happens to a couple of people. It's fairly rare, but I have heard of it. So keeping the hands grasping on the heels. We want a pretty tight grasp because we're going to want to kind of create some tension here. Let the forehead be on the mat to begin. And then as we prepare to move into rabbit, we're going to let the crown of the head come to the floor and start to let your hips rise. I've even seen people doing rabbit with their forehead touching their knees. I cannot get in that deep into the posture, but you understand that that's sort of the goal, that extreme rounding of the spine. Hips are drawing up, holding on to the heels, creating that tension and breathing. One more breath. And then slowly drop the hips back down. Widen your knees a little bit. Let the forehead come to the mat. Letting the hands reach ahead of you back to extended child and relax. Let's take a breath here. From here, we'll start to roll up slowly. A lot of people like to take a breath in heroes, feel free. For some people, it's hard on the knees, so feel free to go ahead and let your legs stretch long in front of you. When you're ready, adjust into a seated position where your legs are stretched long in front of you. It might feel pretty good to shake out your legs a little bit to roll your shoulders a few times. We did not go into any arm balancing pose. So in order to get that kind of core strength and that shoulder strength, we're gonna go through a modified arm balancing pose called baby grasshopper. Um, it's a challenging pose um, in, in its full expression, but whether you are able to get into the full expression of the posture or not, know that your body is getting a very good stretch in many ways. And I stretch through the spine, some work through the shoulders, some work through the core, even in a partial version of this. This is a posture where you might want to strap 
you don't happen to have a yoga strap nearby, you can use a kitchen towel or something else that doesn't have much give to it. As we start with our leg stretch long to move into this, we're going to start by bending into the left leg first. So as the left foot comes close to you, we're going to go ahead and cross over the right leg. And then from here, we're going to start to tip our weight all the way over to the right side of your bottom so that the left side even kind of lifts up off the mat. Taking the left hand in front of this leg and either reaching for a strap here or go ahead and reach for the full, full outside of the foot. Plant your right hand, feel your elbow draw in. You're gonna to start to ground down through all five fingers of that right hand and then push down into your left foot until maybe in the full expression, you lift. So that only the foot and the hand are in contact with the mat. You might just play around with it. Come up for a second, come down, see if you can kind of get some lift and then come down or you might be able to just hold here. Once again, even if you can't get this full lift, you're getting a great stretch and a lot of work through the shoulder and the core in this posture, even in a modified version. On your next exhale, if you are up, come down, settle the sit bones back into the earth, uncross, and let the left knee fall open so that the left foot is now on the inner thigh of the right leg. You could put a block under this leg or pillow or a rolled up blanket under this leg if you want some cushion here. Otherwise, notice the knee dropping open, opening through the hip. Settle the sit bones deep into the earth. Let the arms begin to sweep wide, reach up. And as we exhale, we'll fold forward. You can reach for a strap here. You can reach for the calf or maybe the ankle, maybe all the way to the bottom of the foot. Lead with your heart and breathe. One more breath here. We'll move into a side stretch from here. You're gonna keep the right hand wherever it happens to be, strap, ankle, calf, foot. Open the heart and begin to reach over your left ear with your left hand toward your foot. Not expecting to make contact, just reach that way. One more breath here. As we exhale, start to come up nice and slowly. Make your way back to a seated position. We'll add a gentle twist. The right hand can come to the left knee for leverage and very gently start to twist at the spine, using your left fingertips to come back and behind you as leverage to twist. Inhale, find length. Exhale, you might twist a little deeper. Last breath here. Keep your twist and let your gaze begin to drift over to the right. It's gonna give the neck a good release. And then we'll untwist, come back around. Lengthen both legs, shake out your legs a little bit, roll your shoulders a few times. We'll switch sides with this from here. I'm going to turn around so that I'm not, my back's not facing you for maybe grasshopper portion. It'll be facing you for other parts of it, but we're going to go ahead and bend into the right knee. Right foot comes closer to the body, kind of right opposite your knee, and then cross over. Shift your weight over to the left. Plant your left hand, the right hand's reaching in front of your leg for the outside of your foot or maybe a strap here. Feeling a nice stretch here, push down into your left hand, push down into your right foot and this might be where you are. Notice the work in the core, draw your belly button in, engage your core. Maybe it feels okay to lift. Once again, you can play around with that. Take another couple breaths here, three, two, and one, come back down if you're up. Settle both sit bones <laughs> into the mat. And we're gonna uncross and go ahead and let the right knee fall open. Once again, notice the release through the hip with this. If you need a block under there for some support or a blanket, feel free. Square off to your extended left leg and let the arms begin to sweep wide, reach up. Exhale, hold. Reaching for whatever you can, strap, ankle, calf, Aiming to keep length in the spine, so you're leading with the heart, looking for that chest to thigh connection. A little deep breath here. Let's take one more. Adjusting into our side stretch, the left hand stays wherever it is. Let the heart open. Right arm reaches over the right ear towards your left foot. Imagine that sensation in extended side angle. Straight line all the way from the fingertips down to your sit bones. And as we exhale, we'll start to come up nice and slowly. 
The hand comes back and behind you, fingertips facing away from you. Left hand comes to the right knee for leverage, and then very slowly, gently twist. Bringing out the body, releasing stress. Inhale, find length. Exhale, you might twist deeper. The gaze is drifting over the right shoulder. To release through the neck, keep your twist, and let the gaze look over the left shoulder. Last breath. Exhale, untwist. Let both legs be long. Shake out your legs, roll your shoulders a couple of times. We're gonna go through a little bit of shoulder work, and this is also a pose that really neutralizes the spine after all that twisting on both sides. Reverse plank, and then we'll move into a seated forward bend. Let the fingertips face the hips. Elbows pull back and behind you, point your toes, legs are long. As you exhale, lift your hips. Full inhale, full exhale, slowly come down. Settle the sit bones back into the mat. Inhale, arms sweep wide, reach up, hold. Prayer hands might push together for more work through the shoulders. And then move into your seated forward bend. Once again, you are welcome to use a strap here. The strap would wrap both feet. You can reach for your ankles, your calves, or maybe you're able to reach all the way to the bottoms of the feet. We once again want to lead with the heart. One more breath. Start to come up, slide the hands up the legs or strap. Sit tall, shake out your legs. We're going to move um, our sit bones right to the middle of the mat if they aren't already there. Preparing to go into boat before we go into a recline position, one or two recline poses before we can make our way to final relaxation. Everybody's favorite part, right? To move into boat, we want to bend into the knees. Knees and feet are about hip distance apart. Keep the chest rising. What we don't want to do is slump. So imagine just a little string right at the stern that's pulling you up toward the ceiling. Grasp behind the thighs, right below the knees, and begin to tip the weight from the sit bones back to the sacrum for balance. You can stay here, you're gonna feel some work here. Add more work by lifting the feet. Add more work by releasing the hands. Drop your shoulders, lift the chest. You're welcome to find full boat, lengthening through the legs. Three, two, one. Sit tall for a breath. Let the knees come in toward the chest, widen the knees, rock back and forth a couple of times. Three, we're going to add to it this time. I'm going to turn back toward the front of the camera so you can see this position a little better. So as we prepare to move into boat, grasp behind the thighs, begin to tip back, and lift your feet one at a time. Release your hands. Add into it's always optional. Go ahead and stay in half boat this time. As you inhale, twist to one side. As you exhale, twist to the other. One more of these. Inhale, exhale. Then we're going to come to center and take a toe grasp. If you can, open up into that seated balance. That straddle position, you're still balanced right on the sacrum, engaging the core. Last breath here. It happens. <laughs> and we'll come out of it by letting the soles of the feet come together, setting ourselves up for cobblers or your version of this. If you've got tighter hips, the feet further away might feel good. You can just bounce your knees a couple of times to ease a deeper stretch into the inner thighs and hips. You can kind of inch the heels closer in, interlace the fingers, wrap the feet, bounce your knees a couple of times. Maybe just pause, feeling the knees draw down, feeling the spine stretch long. Maybe it feels okay to draw forward. You shouldn't feel a pinch in the low back. Stay tuned into your body. Noticing that release, we'll take one more breath. Exhale, slowly come up. Bounce your knees a couple of times. And we're going to work into a fully reclined position from here. You're welcome to add a rocking motion. Some people enjoy that. For other people, it's just simply jarring through their spine. If it is for you, you're going to hug your knees in, round your spine, and rock from the head to the feet two or three times before you ease down. Otherwise, grasp behind the thighs as if you're going to go back into boat. But this time, one vertebrae at a time, ease right down to the floor into this fully reclined position. As you make your way to the floor, pull your knees towards your chest, gentle hug. Rock back and forth a few times on the spine. 
back to center with your rocking. Go ahead and release your feet to the floor, knees bent. Hands are next to the body, palms side down. We're going to go into a hip opening pose, reclined pigeon from here. Align the right ankle to cross over the left knee, and it's just like you're sitting in a chair with the ankle crossed at the knee. Let your right knee just gently drape open. Aiming to take your right hand right through that little triangle you've now created. Lift up your left foot, interlace the fingers, and interlace them right behind the left thigh. And then slowly let your head come back down to the floor. We don't want to be in this position that's a lot of extra strain on the neck. We want that head to be just resting on the floor. Pulling the legs closer towards you is going to open that right hip even more. So as you move deeper into this, move on an exhale, just very gently ease the legs closer. You can even make the stretch a little deeper if you want to add some pressure with the right elbow, pushing against the right knee. Aiming to find a place of surrender here. Start to notice the weight of the legs. We'll take two more breaths. In through the nose, out through the nose. One more. At the bottom of the breath, release. Let your left foot come back down to the floor. Uncross and we'll switch sides. Let the left ankle cross over the right knee. Notice once again, before you choose to move into it, that left knee kind of drape open. Then lift up the right foot, interlace the fingers behind the right thigh, and exhale, pull the legs in towards your torso. That hinge is still right at the hips. Head is resting on the floor. We don't want that strain on the neck. And you're noticing a deep stretch run into the left hip. We hold on to almost as much stress and tension in our hips as we do our neck and shoulders. If you choose to move deeper, move on an exhale, maybe easing that pressure against the left knee with the left elbow. One more breath here. And exhale, release, right foot comes back down, uncross, pull the knees toward the chest, gentle hug, and we're going to move into happy baby from here, which is a great release after that hip opening, reaching into the inner arches of flex feet, or maybe taking a toe grasp if that's better for you, drawing bent knees toward the earth, gently releasing through the hips. Some people like a rocking motion here. You're welcome to add it. Happy baby. One more breath here. Back to center with your rocking. Draw the knees gently to the chest, gentle hug. Keep your left knee drawn in. Let your right leg stretch along on the mat. We'll go through a supine twist before we move into final relaxation. The right hand begins to pull the left knee across the body slowly. Let your left hand open out into a full T if you've got the space. And then slowly the gaze might also drift to the left. Beginning to allow the body to relax more and more. Setting ourselves up for final relaxation, so we're wanting the breath to be calming and nourishing. Move on an exhale, start to untwist slowly. Knees come back to the chest, gentle hug. Switching sides, the right knee stays drawn in, the left leg stretches long, and the left hand begins to pull the right knee across the body. Aiming to keep the shoulders in contact with the mouth, the twist is right in the spine. One more breath here. Bottom of the breath. Untwist when you're ready, of course. Draw the knees back to the chest, gentle hug. After twisting, for some people, some people just want to hug the knees in and roll around a little bit. For some people, um, a kind of quick plow feels really good to neutralize the spine. If that is you, the hands are going to come next to the body, palms side down, lengthen the legs, and kind of push into the arms and hands, letting the feet come back and behind you, rounding the spine, breathe, and then very slowly, one vertebrae at a time, release back down, ending with that hug drawing the knees toward the chest. If you want to add a tight ball, I like to offer this in my classes. I feel like sometimes that tension and tightness helps relaxation wash over the body. It's not for everyone, but if it is for you, you would draw tight into that ball. Pull the knees in tight, pull the elbows in tight, lift the head, engage the core. And then as you exhale, start to release and relax into your position for Shavasana, final relaxation. 
If you're in traditional corpse pose, the legs are stretched long, feet splaying outward, hands drawn away from the body, palms side up. You might move into reclined cobblers, let the soles of the feet come together, the knees drop open to the sides. If you've got any sort of low back issues, for many people it feels good just to simply let the knees stay bent, separating your feet far enough apart from one another so that the knees can start to tent in toward one another, pulling some pressure out of the back. Hands can draw away from the body, palms side up, or you might adjust your hands to the belly. Starting to notice the movement coming with the breath, the rise and fall of the chest and belly. Starting to clear the mind. In Shavasana, we are aiming for a place where the body is still and the mind is clear. It's not always easy to find that combination. Use the breath to keep the mind quiet. Begin to notice the weight of the body. It's feeling heavier as you relax more. The natural sensations of the body at rest. Take a moment to swallow. Pause for a cleansing breath here. Inhale through the nose, fill up the lungs. And exhale through the mouth. You might repeat that breath. Puffing out the cheeks. And then taking a moment to swallow once again. Your eyes are closed, eyelids feel heavy. Giving yourself permission for just a couple of minutes, maybe 10 or 15 breaths, to find a place of quiet, of stillness, maybe a little bit of peace. We'll begin to bring a little more awareness back to the body. Take a moment, swallow once again, notice your breath. This time it's bringing you back. You can start with some small movements when you're ready, wiggling your fingers, your toes, moving the muscles in the face. You can graduate to larger movements as you feel ready. Maybe bend into your elbows, your knees. Maybe start to sway bent knees back and forth, releasing through the hips. And a good release for the wrists is to start by stretching the hands wide, lengthen your fingers, and then drawing the fists, taking the thumbs to the inside. Rotate through the wrists a couple of times like this, both directions. You can also rotate through your ankles. From here, staying connected to the breath. Next exhale, let the head begin to turn to the left. Left ear falls a little closer to the mat. And then 
then exhale, turn back over to the right. From here, when you're ready, begin to turn over onto your right side. Using your right arm as a pillow, supporting your head. You're in this fetal position, so there's a natural bend in the knees. Take a moment here, let the body be relaxed and soft. And then when you're ready, there's no rush, you can start to push yourself up into a comfortable seated position. As you do make your way here, let your eyes be closed once again. Sit bones, you're drawing deep into the earth, rooting you down, weight of the hands is draped to the knees. You're feeling even, balanced, hopefully connected through mind, body, and spirit. We'll end the practice here with the breath together. Slowly inhale the arms up. You'll feel prayer hands draw together above you. You might choose to open the eyes to gaze upon prayer hands, feeling a sense of gratitude for being physically and mentally able to be on your mat today. Release prayer hands to heart center. What is good and true and honorable in me bows to what is good and true and honorable in you. Namaste. My name is Betsy, and I am happy that you joined me in my yoga practice today with my daughter, Georgia. Hope to see you again soon.